A wonderful morning to each and every sons of God this morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. It's great to see each and every one to be here once again in his house, in his home. And I would just like to share a word of his to you, to us this morning. And it says in the book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 5, Great is our God and abundant in power. Amen? His understanding is beyond measure. Wow! How great is our God into our lives. And sometimes we might not see it because of our circumstances here in this world. But then again, in this world. So, we're still here in this world. And we are not excused from those happenings so or from what is happening in this world. Nevertheless, the power of God, the power that He has, He has put into us. And it is what keeps us from harm. That's why you were here today. It's no accident that we're still here in His house. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great? Amen. Hallelujah. And right now, I invite each and every one to stand up. And let us pray to God at this point. With all heads bowed down, eyes closed. Just utter a word. Say a prayer of thanks to God. Say a prayer of how we adore Him. Say a prayer of forgiveness. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for everything that I have done into my life. Forgive me, O oh Lord, for the shortcomings. Lord, forgive me, O oh Lord, for everything that I have done wrongfully in Your sight. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we see how wonderful, how majestic, and how gracious you are. We see the greatness in you, Jesus. As we continue to sing these praises, the songs of praises to you, may you be glorified in each and every way. And we pray that we may see you in everything that we do. Oh Lord my God, when I'm in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds that hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout the universe display Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee How great Thou art how great Thou art Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee How great Thou art How great Thou art And when I think That God His Son and Spirit
is enough for us father and we thank you for it because there is no one like you oh lord there's nothing in this world that can compare to you you are the only god you are our creator you are our everything Nothing, nothing can compare to you in this world. But it is only you, Jesus. And through you, we have given a second chance. Through you, we have been healed. Through you, we are glad. So right now, O oh Lord, as we continue to sing, may you be glorified, O oh Lord. Because we love you. As you love us, Father. Thank you, Jesus.
Tunay nga, Panginoon, na Ikaw ay walang katulad. Tunay, O Diyos, na karapat dapat kang tumanggap ng pinakamataas na papuri at parangal. That's why today, O God, we continue to praise You and worship You. With one voice, we exalt You, O God. We praise you and we glorify you in this place in our midst. We continue to acknowledge your presence, O God, here in our midst, for giving us the privilege and the chance to gather and to lift you up. Father, once again, we come with a humble heart that as we come to your presence, As we receive your grace, as we experience your grace and your mercy, Father, we ask for forgiveness for our shortcomings. Sa mga bagay, Panginoon, na nagawa naming pagkukulang sa inyo, pagkakasala, Father, we desire that this time of worship will not be hindered. So that's why we ask, O God, that you may forgive us from our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that nothing could hinder us in worshiping you today. It is true, O God, that your grace is more than enough Because Jesus is enough. And thank you, O God, for allowing us to experience that. We thank you, Father, for giving us your Son, Jesus, to die for our sins. Just like his character, his humility, may you also reflect in our lives that we will continue to humble ourselves before you so that you will be the only one who will be seen in our lives. Great is thy faithfulness throughout all generations. O God, you are faithful. And we believe that until now you are faithful and you will remain faithful. So, Father, today we will continue to lift you up, not just because you are faithful, but because you deserve it from the hearts of your people. That's why we thank you today, because once again you have allowed us to experience your majesty and glory and power. Thank you because today, O oh God, we can still lift up our voices, our hands, our worship, our adoration, our thanksgiving because of all the things that you have done and for all the things that you will do. We thank you, O oh God, for blessing us with such opportunity to praise you in freedom. Thank you, O God, for this freedom. So we ask that you will continue to speak to us today. Continue to move in our midst today, O God. That your Son, Jesus Christ, will be exalted continuously in our midst, even in our lives. That your words may be alive in our hearts as we continue to live our lives for your glory and honor alone, O God. We thank you for that. We ask, O God, that you will continue to speak to us today in a very special way. May you guide your servant. Use him out as your mouthpiece. Give us the proper and godly understanding on how we can apply your words today. 
in order for us to be closer and nearer to you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Let's give God a clap offering. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Please remain standing for the reading of God's holy word. And please open your Bibles with me in the book of John chapter 11. And we will be reading verses 38 down to verse 44. Again, it's in the book of John chapter 11, verses 38 down to verse 44. John 11, verses 38 down to verse 44. Let's read it responsibly. In verse 38, Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe what you sent me. Let's read the last verse all together. Dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. May God bless the reading of his holy word. You may now all be seated. This song was written, composed, and sung by Steve Green, and it's called God and God Alone. From the mighty to the small, the glory in the Lord is God's and God's God and God alone reveals the truth of all we call. And all the best and worst of men Won't change the master's plan For God and God's alone God and God alone Is fit to take the universe The service to the space for God and God alone. God and God alone will be the joy of our eternal. 
she will be our one design our hearts will never tire of God and God's alone God and God alone is fit to take the universe throne let everything that lives be served its truest praise. For God and God alone, God and God alone is fit to take the universe's throne. Let everything that lives We serve its truest praise For God and God Let everything that lives We serve its truest praise For God and God alone. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Joey. And let us remind you that um, on April 21, that's the third Sunday, we will be having our baptism. So if you are a candidate for baptism, let me remind you that beginning next Sunday, we'll be having our baptism class in my office at 9 o'clock in the morning. And you can also talk to me after the service or during the week in order to prepare you for the coming baptism. We'll be having our baptism here in our auditorium during the uh, service on April 21 at 10 a.m. The message that we're going to share this morning is found in the book of John chapter 11. And we will notice that most of most verses of chapter uh, 11 of John has to do with the raising of Lazarus from the dead. Now, this is not just a historical event. It's not a parable, meaning it's not just an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. It's not an allegory that it has a hidden meaning, but it actually happened as the Word of God depicts. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus live in Bethany and they were close friends of our Lord Jesus Christ and we will remember that when Lazarus was sick Mary and Martha the sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus that his friend the one that he loves was sick. And we will remember that Jesus came to the tomb of Lazarus when he was already dead for four days. But, you know, it might appear that Jesus 
was late in coming. But ne Jesus is never late. And he did not show up late for Lazarus. That means Jesus has a plan and a purpose in coming to Lazarus four days after he died. Now, while this is a story, and it's a true story, it really happened, it provides a big picture of salvation, how the Lord saves sinners. This is a, sto a story that provides a picture of how the Lord saves sinners. And He only, the Bible says, saves by His grace. Amen po ba yan? There is not a Methodist plan of salvation. There is not a Pentecostal plan of salvation. There is not a Catholic plan of salvation. There is not even a Baptist plan of salvation. If a man will be saved, it is by the grace of God. And the sinner's salvation began in eternity past with selection, meaning God already chose those who will be saved even before they were born. In fact, that's what the Bible says, even before the foundation of the world. That's what Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3 says. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realm with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Then in verse 4, it says in Ephesians chapter 2, For He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. It pleased God to save some people by election. We will remember that Romans chapter 9 verse 15 says, and God is saying, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I, have, I will have compassion. He selected those who, will have, who he will have mercy upon, that Christ would die for and the Holy Spirit would quicken and would come to know him as Lord and Savior. Now let's look at the big picture of salvation at the raising of Lazarus. First of all, we can see here a picture of corruption. A picture of corruption. And that is the idea when we actually say the total depravity of man. It's a picture of a, of the total depravity of man. A picture of corruption. If we go back in John chapter 11 verse 14, Jesus made sure that the disciples know that Lazarus is dead. Everybody who is actually born into this world is born dead. And we mean is spiritually dead. Because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1, we were all dead in our trespasses and sins. Lahat po tayo na ipinanganak sa mundong ito, patay. Nagumpisa po 
nung magkasala po si Adan at si Eva. When God created man, He created man for fellowship, for relationship with God. Nilalang po ng Diyos ang tao para makasama, magkaroon ng ugnayan sa Kanya ng walang hanggan. Ngunit kagaya po ng sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos na tayo po ay nilalang ayon sa wangis ng Diyos. Ang ibig pong sabihin sa lahat ng mga nilalang ng Diyos. Tayo lamang po ang binigyan niya ng kakayahan na makipag-ugnayan sa Kanya. Ngunit kasama po ng pagiging kawangis ng Diyos ay ang atin pong kalayaang pumili. Ngunit pinili po natin ang labagin, suwayin ang kagustuhan ng Diyos. At mula nung araw na sinuway ni Adan at ni Eva ang kagustuhan ng Diyos ay nagumpisa po tayong mamatay. At hindi lang po physical death kundi spiritual death. Because the Bible says all have sinned and the penalty of sin is death. At ang sabi po ng aklat ng Epeso, tayo po ay mga patay sa kasalanan. Ang ibig sabihin, wala po tayong magagawa. Dead people are unconcerned about life. When was the last time you hear from a dead person complaining about the rising cost of living? When was the last time you heard from a dead person complaining about the high cost of fuel? When was the last time you heard from a dead person about the rising heat index? Painit ng painit. Yung mga naririnig ko pong nagko-complain, yung mga buhay. Yung mga patay, wala na pong pakialam. They are unconcerned about life. And dead people, spiritually dead people, are unconcerned about spiritual things. Sabi nga po ni Jesus, You refuse to come to me to have life. In fact, the Bible says, No one seeks after God. Wala pong naghahanap sa Diyos. Ang Diyos po ang naghahanap sa atin. And then Jesus Himself had said, Unless the Father draws Him, He will not come to me. Dead people not only are unconcerned about life because they are not concerned about anything. In fact, the Bible says, even the message of the cross is foolishness to them. It is foolishness to those who are perishing. Going to church is foolishness. Reading the Bible is foolishness to those who are spiritually dead. But not only that, that they are unconcerned about life and about things that matter, but they are also utterly helpless. Wala po silang magawa para tulungan ang kanilang mga sarili. And the church cannot help them. Prayers cannot help them. The only one who can help them is the one who said, I am the resurrection 
and the life. No one can come to the Father. I mean, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, he shall live again. Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 44, No man can come to me unless the Father draws him. No man, in other words, lost in sin can come to me. That's what Jesus is saying. Unless he is motivated, he is quickened by the Father. And those are the people who will want to come because the Father will draw them. And so, dahil patay po ang tao sa kasalanan, wala po siyang magagawa unless ang Diyos po ang magbibigay buhay sa Kanya. You know, Jesus said in John 11.39, Take away the stone. When Jesus was already in front of the tomb of Lazarus, He said, Take away the stone. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, Lazarus, by this time, there is already a bad odor. In other words, Martha was saying, But Lord, he's been dead for four days already, and he already stinks. You know, the only thing that the sinner can do is stink. Because he is dead in trespasses and sin. Lazarus was already corrupted. And the corruption was extensive. And we can see the picture in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 4 through 6. In Isaiah chapter 1 verses 4 through 6, it talks about a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord and they have provoked the Lord or God. In Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6, but we are all as unclean thing and all are and all their righteousness are as filthy rags ganun po ang katatayuan ng taong wala sa Diyos ng taong makasalanan kahit anong gawin po niyang kabutihan kahit anong gawin niyang pagpupunyagi sa harapan ng Diyos para po makamta niya ang kaligtasan. Tinitingnan lang po ng Diyos na parang maruming basahan. Everything we try to do to merit salvation are as filthy rags before God. They are as filthy rags in the nostrils of God. And so, just as there is a bad odor among the dead, our sins stink in the nostrils of God. That's what dead people do. They stink. Nakaamoy na po ba kayo ng patay na tao? Maybe you do not understand what I'm saying because you have not yet smelled a bad odor from a dead person. Actually, it stinks. And that's what dead people do. They stink. And we stink before God. Without God, we stink before Him. And sinners have no 
life of godliness, none whatsoever. They cannot earn salvation and they cannot work for it. And that is the picture of corruption in the raising of Lazarus. Imagine, Lazarus has been dead for four days already. The process of decomposition has taken place. And that is why we can understand Martha when he said, Lord, but Lord, he has been dead for four days already. How come you are asking us to remove the stone? Not only we can see a picture of corruption here, but we see a picture of regeneration. Something has to happen if Lazarus is going to like to act like he's alive. Yeah. Hindi po pwedeng walang mangyari. Dapat may mangyari muna bago si Lazarus ay titindig mula sa kanyang libingan. Lazarus was corrupted and his corruption was extensive. And not only that, his corruption was obnoxious, meaning it was offensive to God. Our corruption was extensive or offensive to God. Kaya nga po ang sabi, the wrath of God is upon us. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5, we're all dead in our trespasses and sins. Ephesians 2, 1, and then Ephesians 2, 5 says, for the wrath of God is upon us. You know, you know, when you were vo born the first time, you were given a physical life. When you, when you were born again, you were given a spiritual life. Kung minsan lang pa po tayo na ipanganak, physical life po ang meron tayo. Pero wala po tayong spiritual life. Dead po tayo spiritually. That is why we need to be born again. And that's what Jesus said to Nicodemus. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Unless one if is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Kailangan po tayong may panganak na muli. And Nicodemus could not understand that. That's why he asked, how can these things be? In fact, he even asked, shall I enter into my mother's womb the second time in order to be born again? And that's why Jesus said, Nicodemus, you do not understand. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Meaning, kung mamanahin po natin ang kaharian ng Diyos, kailangan po tayong maipanganak na muli. And the word born again means to be born from above. Meron pong kailangan mangyari. And this is what regeneration is all about. And that is why Jesus said in John 11, 43, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! Lazarus, come out. 
It is a particular call. Now, why? Because it was only Lazarus who will need to come out at that time. If Jesus did not say Lazarus, all others will come out. And that is why Jesus was so particular. Lazarus, come out. It is a particular call. Lazarus, you're dead, but I would like you to come out. Lazarus must be given life before he can walk out of that tomb. And the sinner must be given life before the gospel will make sense. You know, that's why you don't have to be discouraged. When you share the gospel, and when we say the gospel, it's about the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And people, sinners, will not make sense out of it. To them, it does not make any sense unless God will call them for salvation. Unless God will quicken them through the Holy Spirit. That is why, you know, I continue to encourage you to share the gospel to anyone. Because we do not know who God has called for salvation. Ang Diyos alam po niya kung sino yung kanyang pinili. Ang Diyos alam niya kung sino yung mga maliligtas. Pero hindi po natin alam. And that is why we continue to share the good news, the gospel. And it's not our job to convict people. It's not our job, you know, to convert people. But it is our job, if you are really a child of God, to communicate the gospel, the good news of salvation to everyone. Amen po ba yun? And if they ignore you, and if they reject you, it's okay. They are not rejecting you. They are rejecting the gospel. They are rejecting Jesus. But we can understand the reason that it does not make sense to sinners, the gospel. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. And the call of Lazarus were, was particular because not all are called to be saved. Our God is sovereign and He will do what He wants us to do or what He wants to do, how He wants to do it, and He does not need to consult to anyone if He wants to do it. And if you're saved, God called you in particular. Amen po ba yun? Out of the many, God chose you. Handpicked you even before the foundation of the world. Even before you were born, God already chose you. And God spoke to you. He spoke to your heart in a very special way, in an effectual way. 
and only one was raised. It was only Lazarus. The others were left. The call of Lazarus was a particular call, but it was also effectual, meaning it works. And Lazarus called to life, you know, had no need for cooperation. Hindi na po kailangan may gawin si Lazaro para po siya tumindig o mabuhay muli. Our salvation has nothing to do with us contributing to the Lord. Wala pong ginawa si Lazaro para po siya ay mabuhay na maguli o tumindig. Patay nga po. Helpless nga po. And so, we also have no contribution in our salvation. Wala po tayong pwedeng ipagmalaki. Kaya nga po ang salita ng Diyos ay maliwanag in saying, For by grace, you have been saved. Only by grace, we have been saved. Because remember, we are dead. We are all dead in our trespasses and sin. And God doesn't need your cooperation for us to be saved. Jesus simply said, Lazarus, come out. And it was effectual because it worked. He did come out. And that's the picture of regeneration. Huwag po natin isipin, pilili po tayo ng Diyos na maligtas dahil nakita niyang mabait po tayo. Mabuti po tayo. Wala pong mabuti sa atin. Amen po ba yun? We're all dead in sin. We're all sinners. No one is good except God. Amen po ba yun? Pero pinili po niya tayo na maligtas. Not only it's a picture of regeneration. At doon sa regeneration, wala po tayong contribution. It's a picture of conversion. Look again in verse 43. Lazarus, come out! You know, regeneration is like conception. Yung pagbubuntis. Conversion is like birth. Ayan. Coming forth. There will be no conversion without conception. Nakita, nakakita na po ba kayo ng ipinanganak na hindi nagbuntis yung babae? Wala pong ganun. Meron munang conception and then merong birth. And there will be no conception apart from the quickening power of the Holy Spirit to give life to a dead sinner. You know, sinner. We cannot achieve anything. We cannot do anything to achieve that position of being given life. Lazarus coming out is a picture of conversion. James 1.18 says, It was of his own will that he gave us birth. James 1.18 says, It was of his own will that he gave us birth. Meaning, it was God's own will that he brought us forth. And so, the location of Lazarus 
had been changed when he got out of that grave. And then his conduct was also changed. Try to imagine it. Jesus said, Lazarus, come out. And G, I mean, uh, Lazarus had to stand up, had to come out of the grave, and his conduct was changed. You know, when God called you, there was a particular call, and there was a part, uh, an effectual call, and then all of a sudden, something changed in your life. Hindi po pwede, hindi po mabago ang ating buhay. Amen po ba yun? You know, you should have heard the testimony of, or the testimony of Brother Bob Holgan. Yesterday, I, I was with him. He shared his testimony at the Sanitary Care Products Asia. Every Saturday, we have a Bible study, Bible study there from 8 to 9. And I'm sure the people there were blessed to hear his testimony. Maybe one of these Sundays, you will hear how God changed Brother Bob Colgan. Brother Bob, by the way, in a way, is a product of our church. I remember in 1981, I was in college, and remember I told you, I was just attending the church, I was seated at the back, and before anyone would get out of the auditorium, after the service, I was the one, the first one to leave the place. Uh, it was like that every Sunday, I was just seated at the back until these two brothers by the name of Brother John Kemp and Brother, um, I forgot the other one, Tracy. Brother Tracy. What's the first name? Tracy? Yes. Brazil. Tracy Brazil. Yes. And they were actually the, the regular um, Greeters. Ayan. Ano po bang pangalan nung lumalakad papunta dito sa harapan? Assers. Ayan. Na, na may mental block po ako. They noticed me. <laughs> and they took the time to encourage me. Hey brother, why don't you help us in the ushering? So I started to be an usher in the church. In our church, 1981, can you imagine? Some of you were not yet even born. <laughs> 1981, makapal pa po yung buhok ko. So, I was very proud to walk down the aisle to do ushering and, you know, to do greeting in front of the church. And one time they said, why don't you go with us every Tuesday afternoon? We do Bible study at the barracks inside the base. You know, at that time, because they're members of the U.S. Air Force, if you get inside the base, it's really a privilege. Kapag nakapasok ka sa Clark, parang nasa Amerika ka na. Amoy Amerikano? <laughs> oh, so excited ako. Sige, why not? So they asked me to join them and then they give me an assignment because they know I play the guitar. Why don't you play the guitar for us? And then I would lead the, the singing before the Bible study. Every week we do that. That was in 1981. Then all of a sudden, after many years, of course, uh, Brother John Kemp, some of you may remember, he visited our church uh, before COVID. And he... He even uh, preached in our church. Brother Bob, when, when was the first time you came here this time? This year or last year? This year. 
Yeah, this year. Imagine after many years, Brother Bob came to our church. He was just walking around here, and then he saw our church, and then he came in. Who was the first person you met here, Brother Bob? Me, okay. It was me. <laughs> it was me. Okay. So we had a conversation, and then the first thing or the first question I asked him, how did you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Because he was sharing already about his testimony. So, you know, he said, I remember there was this uh, man by the name of John Kemp who shared to me the gospel, and I started attending the Bible study. And then I was really surprised because I remember 1981, we're doing the Bible study there, and Brother Bob was very young at that time. He was just 19 years old, right? 19 years old, can you imagine? When he prayed to receive Christ. So, he came to know Jesus. Of course, many things happened in his life. He worked as a air police in the U.S. Air Force at Clark Air Force Base. Then he was actually assigned in many places eventually became a police officer in Washington, D.C. But his life, it was not really an overnight change, but his life began to change. And he shared about his addiction to drugs, to sex. I remember he even said, he slept with more than 600 women. Can you imagine that? And then, he was addicted to alcohol. I mean, uh, he was really involved in a lot of things. But God changed him. Amen po ba yan? And he's now a changed person. And I would like him to share his testimony one of these Sundays. But there was a change in location on Lazarus when he was given life. And there was a change in his conduct. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old is gone and the new has come. He did nothing at the grave, but when he got out of the grave, he had something to do. Then in, we can see here a portrait not only of corruption, not only of regeneration, not only a picture of conversion, but a picture of sanctification. John 11:44. it says there, The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linens and a cloth around his face. And Jesus said to them, Take off the great clothes, loose him. Let him go. You know, we don't need bound Christians today. Because as we sing, and uh, I, I, I remember we sang it some time ago, where the Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. Amen po yan. If the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Because we can do the things that God wants us to do with the Holy Spirit 
residing in us. You know, it's actually a picture of sanctification. The grave clothes must be removed. Wala na po tayo sa pagkakaalipin. Pinalaya na nga po tayo ng Panginoong Jesus. Pero maraming mananampalataya, pinalaya na. Pero parang alipin pa rin sila ng kasalanan. Kaya nga po, ito po ay picture po ng sanctification. Now, sanctification means living the life that God wants us to live. To be conformed to the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. To grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hindi po tayo makukontento na tayo ay ligtas, kundi tayo po ay maglilingkod sa Diyos. Amen po ba yun? Lazarus did not remain in the grave. Lazarus did not remain bound. Nung paglabas po ni Lazarus ay meron pong balot sa plot ang kanyang katawan maging ang kanyang mukha pero pinaalis ng Panginoong Heso Kristo. It's a portrait of sanctification. Meaning, God can use you for His glory and honor. Amen po ba yan? Ang tanong, meron po bang ginagawa ang Diyos sa pamamagitan ng inyong buhay? Naniniwala po ako na tinawag po tayo ng Diyos para po pagliguran siya at gawin ang kanyang kagustuhan sa ating mga buhay. So, we are already set free to do what God wants us to do. And then, we can also see here a portrait of glorification. Because chapter 11 does not end in chapter 11 only. It ended in chapter 12. In John chapter 12 verse 1 and 2, it says there, Then six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany where Jesus lived whom Jesus raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus, take note, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. What a picture of glorification. Amen po ba yun? Our glorification involves bodily resurrection. Romans 8:22 to 23 says, I mean I I don't have the time to read it, but it talks about the redemption of our bodies. If you have time to read it later on, and then in 1 Thessalonians 4:16 17 it says, the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout and the dead in Christ shall rise first. You know the cemetery? You know, Brother Bob uh, found, finally found an apartment near the cemetery in San Francisco, Mabalakat. And I told him yesterday, I toured him around the place. That's my playground when I was a kid. <laughs> It's my favorite place. But you know, did you know that the cemetery will be the, the busiest place when Christ returns? I remember 
It's my favorite place to visit, Brother Bob. But it will be the busiest place because all the children of God will rise first. Amen po ba yun? Baka po pag dumating ang ating Panginoong Jesus, nasa sementeryo tayo at makita po natin mismo na yung mga namatay na nasa Panginoong Jesus, they will rise first. Everybody who is saved is going to come out of their graves. And God's people are going to come out of their graves. And then in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, Dear friends, the Bible says, Now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But, what, or, but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And then, if you have time to read it later, Revelation 19 Verses 5 to 9, our salvation will be consummated and completed at that time when Christ appears. Our salvation is actually past, present, and future. Because the Bible talks about those who are saved. For by grace, you have been saved. Past. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you have been saved. It's also a present tense because it also says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who who are being saved. Meaning, presently, we are being saved. We have already been saved, but we are being saved. And then, the Word of God has also to say about our future salvation in Romans chapter 13, verse 11, where it says, salvation is nearer receive it. Meaning, our salvation is past because we have been saved from the penalty of sin. It is present because we are being saved from the pollution of sin and we will be saved from the presence of sin. And today, we actually remember what the Lord Jesus Christ has done on the cross to secure our salvation. The Bible says, even the Apostle Paul said, who, He who began a good work in you will be able to complete it in you until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. We will remember when Jesus said, I shall never drink this cup again until I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. So as we partake of these elements, let us continue to remember our salvation is a process and I hope that you have been encouraged by the message and the savior of the message about our regeneration, our conversion, and sanctification and glorification. Let us all bow our heads in prayer. If you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you can accept him now. Maybe you're one of those called by God, chosen by God. And I hope and I pray as you hear the message today that the Lord spoke to you in a very special way and you will receive 
Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If this is your desire, I would like to pray with you this simple prayer of acknowledging Jesus Christ in your life. You can receive him as your Lord and Savior. And you can say this simple prayer. And you can repeat after me, Father, I admit I am a sinner. And unless you do something, I will not really have life. Thank you for your son who said that I came that you might have life and might have it more abundantly. I would like to accept to receive your son Jesus Christ and invite him to come into my heart. Jesus, I invite you to come. Cleanse me from all my sin. I would like you to live in my life. I would like you to be my Lord and my Savior. I would like to turn away from all my sins and embrace you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, for your promise of forgiveness through faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your promise of eternal life and thank you for the blessing that came through your Son in my life. In Jesus' name, I pray and thank you. Amen. You know, the elements that we are going to partake today are for those who have already accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and have a relationship with God the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. This is not for all but only to those who personally invited Jesus Christ to come into their hearts. You may not be a member of our church, but if you have already accepted Christ, you are free to partake of the elements. And I would like to ask our deacons to administer the elements we have in front of us as a reminder of what Jesus has done at the cross of Calvary to pay the pe penalty of our sins.
Think about His love. Think about His goodness. Think about His grace that brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Think about His love. Think about His love. Think about His goodness. Think about His grace that brought us through. For as high as the heavens above. So great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. How can I forget? His love How can I forget His mercy He satisfies He satisfies Satisfied my desire. Great is the measure of our fathers. Great is the measure of. Great is the measure. Great is the measure of Great is the measure of our Father's love Let us go to God in prayer. Our dear Lord God and Heavenly Father, we Humbly come before your throne of grace, but with confidence that in Jesus Christ we have this salvation. And only through the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ can we offer up these sacrifices and come boldly before you, O Lord. Thank you for sending your Son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins, nailing our death certificate on the cross and giving us new life in Christ. Thank you for this celebration that we can remember your great love and sacrifice for us. Thank you even for the past Holy Week that we were able to reflect on the life and work and ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we respond, Lord, with obedience with faithfulness, knowing that you are able to keep us from falling. And when we do fall, we have a Savior who is interceding for us. And that by the blood of Jesus Christ, all our sins are washed away. May this remembrance of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ remind us that it, this salvation, was for free, but it is not cheap.
for it was paid for by the life and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you for the power of resurrection that resurrected Christ and in him we are also resurrected and are being sanctified and glorified for your service and ministry and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's all stand, please. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you, that on the night our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took the bread, and after thanksgiving or giving thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Eat it whenever you eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he said, This is the new covenant in my blood. Drink it. Whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For when you eat of the bread and when you drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please be seated. Good morning, church. Uh, we have now come to the part of our worship and service to the Lord by giving back our tithes and offering and as pastor, Chris said in his message today, we had no contribution in our salvation. Amen po ba yun? That means wala po tayong binigay na kahit isang uh, gawain or pera para po tayo po ay maligtas. And so by giving our tithes and offering, we are not trying to earn our salvation, nor we are also not trying to maintain our salvation. Because some of us might think that if we don't give, we might lose our salvation. No, that's our salvation is sealed by the Holy Spirit. But we give because of the grace given to us by, by God. So I'd like to read a portion of Romans chapter 12, verse 5, up to verse 8, where it says, Apostle Paul said, So in Christ we, though many, form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. And in verse 13, he says, Share with the Lord's people who are in need. So our, the, the gifts, the tithes and offering are used to support our mission, our mission work, not just in Atlubola, our, our feeding uh, supports the workers, our pastors. And so let us give generously as the Lord guides us. So this is not for everyone. This is only for the members of the church. But if you are here as a visitor and the Lord is speaking to your heart to give, you may freely do so. And those who are worshiping online, we have the account numbers and Gcash number posted. And there's, always, there's someone who is managing it and receiving it. And we thank you for sending your tithes and offering through the online resources. Let's go to God in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this another Sunday that we can serve you and have fellowship with each other. Thank you, Lord, for the precious message that we have heard through Pastor Chris. And thank you, dear Lord, that we can participate in your work by giving and returning our tithes and offering, not to earn our salvation, but to respond to you uh, as your children who are faithful workers and ministers. Be praised and be glorified in our giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Okay, we would like you to know that uh, we have been praying already for quite some time uh, about having a vehicle. Uh, praise God, lumabas na po yung isa sa dalawa. Amen to them. And uh, the result of our fundraising for months already uh, has come to fruition. And I would like to recognize the presence of our vehicle committee. Would you stand where you are, vehicle committee members? Ayan, Brother Vic, Brother Adolf, Brother PJ, Brother Mars, at uh, Brother Khalil. Kasama ka ba? Ande. Um, Brother Amador, Villarreal. Thank you very much. Uh, ayan. And, of course, a lot of help came from Sister Pamela Ponce. Sister Pam, would you please stand? Yeah. At uh, tinulungan po niya tayo sa car company, ayan, sa bank, in order to do the loan. <laughs> we are already uh, raising funds for the monthly <laughs> payment of our vehicle. Dalawa po yun, yung APB. Ayan, siya po yun. At uh, APB Suzuki. Uh, seven or eight seater po yan. At uh, babayaran po natin ng 19,000 per month. Ayan. At isa lang po yung lumabas muna to follow po yung isa. Ayan, probably in a few weeks time. But uh, thank you for your contribution to our vehicle fan, uh, fund. At magagamit po yung ating mga sasakyan ngayon sa mga gawain ng ating church. Palakpakan po natin ang Diyos. Thank you. Mamaya po, we will bless the vehicle. Ayan. We will uh, pray over it. If you are free after the service, pagkatapos po natin mag-greet sa bawat isa, we can go there and then uh, pray for our new church vehicle. We would like to thank Sister Ara Dimalanta for the flowers we have this morning. Sister Ara, nandiyan po sa likod. Birthday po niya. Baka hindi pa po kayo nakapag-greet sa kanya. Habulin po ninyo mamaya. Baka masama po niya kayo sa lunch. Ayan. And then uh, we would like to thank our guests who came for the first time to join our worship, si Anna Ruth De La Vega from Clark. Anna Ruth, thank you for joining us. Marites De La Vega. Ayan. Mila Sepe from Valenzuela City. Ayun, si Aling Mila. And then si Shat or chat sa MacArthur MacArthur Highway and then uh, may mga prayer request po sila eh. sasama po natin sa prayer meeting Ayan. let's all stand up please don't uh, forget that we will be having our baptismal service on April 21 if you know of anyone who would like to be baptized or if you yourself would like to follow the Lord's baptism let us know about it Let us go to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary for our sins. And thank you, you have given us the opportunity to receive him as our personal Lord and Savior. And we thank you for the blessing 
all the spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm that was brought about by your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for calling us to be together in this body so we can fulfill what you want us to do as a church. Thank you for each one you have called to be a part of Clarkfield Baptist Church. Thank you for those you have brought to be a part of our worship service this morning. May we continue to be encouraged by your word. May we continue to overflow with thanksgiving and bless others in return as we share your word and your word, the gospel, the good news of salvation to other people. Thank you for each one. Thank you for your presence in our midst. May you dismiss us with your love, with your grace, with your overflowing blessing. Protect us. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless you all. See you next week.